This is my lunchtime project, putting the cage back in again. You genuinely would not believe how many times this cage has gone in and out. I've reached a major milestone. The roll cage, I'm happy with it now. And all these little extra brackets, uh, they're all where I need them to be, ready for tack welding. Look, I've got some in down here, got up there, look. I think it's something like a 16 point roll cage. So now, all I technically need to do is get the spot weld, uh, sorry, the welder out, and tack weld all those plates in, so they don't move. Take the cage out, and then seam weld, that, seam weld those plates. Here's to being over the hump. I've enjoyed my evening working on the car. Barbecue, beer, a bit more work on the roll cage. What can you ask for? I just found in my beer. It's huge. Look. The size of that thing, what is that? That's no, that's no wasp. He was literally, I went to take a swig of my beer and he was in it. So I emptied the beer and got him out. He's dried out, all right. So while I'm welding in the roll cage mounts, um, I'm also plugging up some of the holes that have kind of uh, been drilled in the floor over the years. As we all know, anyone that's been exuberant with their handbrake, well, especially on these old Mark 1s, uh, it has a tendency to crack here. There's actually nothing wrong with the bracket. It's the, it's the floor that it's mounted to that gets the pounding. So oh, I'm going to straighten this out put a reinforcement plate across the top to sort of distribute the load and I'm I'm in two minds whether to make a new bracket because oh actually now I've said that we have a closer look someone's welded a washer onto the end because obviously this bit has snapped off and obviously it's cracked the floor as well right well that's answered that question upgrade time Here we go, so uh, this little bar of captive nuts is going to go on the underneath of the tunnel. I was going to say the inside, but I was going to confuse myself. But basically, it's going there. Right, I've just been mocking up the handbrake. I'm happy with where it's supposed to go, so let's weld her in. It's only 11 o'clock at night. What is 
an acceptable time to stop welding and grinding? I think I'm going to have to ask my mates. Lads, trying to get my rally mini ready. What's an acceptable time to stop welding and grinding at night? Done. Uh, so when the, when the rally mini is done and. Nice, right, Kev. What time's acceptable to be grinding until? Well, you can interpret that in a couple of ways. I'll assume he's talking about metal grinding. I'm going to say, I don't know, Kev, I reckon about 8 o'clock. Don't want to upset the neighbours. Um, but yeah, general span of work, I think it'd go on a little bit later. Um, and if it's banging tunes, got that banging tunes in the garage, uh, probably till about 11, then we've got to turn that down. But I have been known to be out in the garage in the pyjamas till one or two o'clock in the morning, polishing. But then polishing doesn't make much of a noise. Well, Kev, I've got loads of kids and the smallest ones go to bed at seven o'clock. So I generally stop before they go to bed. Some of my neighbors have got kids too. Um, so uh, yeah, about half six, seven o'clock for me. Well, Kev, funny you ask. Uh, certain types of grinding, I would say 8 p.m. or before. Other types of grinding should be kept in the bedroom. Uh, but welding, I've been out in my garage three o'clock in the morning welding, and then clean up the grind the next day. Oh yeah, Kev mate, because uh, I'm a very very nice guy, an upstanding citizen. I think that you should stop making loud noise like grinding and welding at 8 p.m. That's what time is acceptable. Kev mate. I think about half past eight is a good time to stop welding and grinding. But saying that, my neighbours put their house in the market uh, four weeks after we moved in, so what do I know? Well Kev, I would say 8pm. If you've got neighbours that are close to you, 8pm is about the latest I would go. Anything after that, I think it's a bit rude. You know what? Some of my, well, my neighbours can get up in the morning. I stop making noise. Well, I think there's a whole lot of variables there. How can one uh, put a definitive to that, right? It depends on your neighbors. How well do you know your neighbors? How often do you do this? I mean, if you only do it once in a while, you know, as far as the grinding, loud noise, and welding, you know, my gosh, you knock yourself out. You know, if your neighbors call on you, call somebody on you, well then, my gosh, you know, What's up with them? Uh, send them some flowers the next day and say, hey, that happened very often. I apologize for disturbing you. Then knock yourself out. Get the job done. What? Right, let's carry on then. In this area I have noticed that I have yet to stitch weld uh, the main seat base to the floor uh, I bet you're wondering yeah but Kev why do you want to do that and well yeah this car you know it's an X rally cross car it does get abused the floor pan does hit the floor um, you know, a panel beated out quite a few dents that have been in there. But look at this one, like, this is obviously back in the day. I don't think I did this one. But look at how hard it hit the floor, though. It literally turned uh, this little channel inside out. And what it does, you know, when, when they, you see those sort of stresses, it actually pops the spot welds out. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to seam weld it. But also, I'm kind of thinking ahead. At some point, I'm going to want to run fuel lines. Uh, electrical lines and brake lines and fire extinguisher lines uh, from the back of the car to the front uh, and I'm in two minds whether to run it across the main bulkhead 
The advantage of that is that um, if I want to, I can just undo it very quickly. But what I, I would like to do is to run it along inside the channels, a bit like the modern you know, SPI type cars. Cut these bits out so they can run inside and out the, out the front. Uh, I'm not worried about them being in the front because I'm actually gonna build a, a, a raised fake floor for the navigator's footrest. Um, so they could run under that and then up the front bulkhead towards the engine bay. Yeah, don't know. I just might make those channels now. Future proof it and then I can stitch weld them. I wasn't planning on doing that today. go I've made some little channels on that side and on this side and I've managed the best that I can managed to turn that the right way round uh, so all I need to do now then is get the welder out start stitch welding Okay, I've now stitch welded the cross member. So that's all good. Uh, all I need to do really is stitch weld the other side. So I need to clean that back. But of course, as I was going that way, I kind of got distracted and started thinking about the gear gator and how, it, how the rod change fits in. So I've taken the plunge and I've cut that big old bit of line off that was there. And I've just been positioning this uh, genuine mark 2 gator and trying to figure out exactly where it's supposed to be so it's a bit of a mess under there so I'm gonna do some uh, some cutting some shaping and try and get it back to roughly where it's supposed to be before somebody hacked the hell out of it Ta -da! right I've done loads of welding uh, some for the roll cage and some for the other components within the car but I'm just going to give it a good old clean up uh, and then I can give it a coat of etch primer. It's too hot for this malarkey. our salvage gone. Am I the only one that says that when I take a mask off? Or is it just me? Anyway, I've painted it for two reasons. One, just to keep the surface rust off. And uh, two, what a psychological boost that is. Ah. Well, I know the roll cage is going to fit, but I'm not going to refit it now because A, it take, it's an arse to fit it. Um, and there's some other things I want to do and I don't want to damage the roll cage. So thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, click that notification bell because that will let you know when there's a next episode. So thank you very much and I'll see you next time. Ta-ta for now.